might have known. <laughs> well, hello and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now I'm just drifting around on a bit of sand while I wait for the while I wait for the tide because we're hoping hoping to anchor up on a wreck. So all I'm doing is I'm just drifting around with a little bit of ragworm on some small hooks in the hope of catching a flatfish. At the moment all I keep catching is these guys. All I'm doing is presenting a couple of couple of ragworm and I think this is a size one specimen extra. And all it is is it's just on just on a sliding ledger. Now I have got a set of, a set of feathers down off the back, a set of sabikis, because I've been picking up quite a lot of quite a lot of live sand here, look, which is quite a, it's quite a big one. And I'm keeping them alive in a bucket. So on the way out to the wreck I can have a drift over a reef with a live sand hill, hopefully catch a pollock or a bass. We'll just uh, we'll just see what the day holds for us. I think we've actually found another one. <laughs> As suspected. As suspected, another dogfish. Their eyes are something else, aren't they? Proper dark eyes. So you know, it's closed that one. Let me show you this one. <laughs> just as I was dropping this, just as I was dropping this place rig to the bottom, something's hit it. <laughs> Feels like a pollock, but it. I hadn't even reached the bottom and the rod hooped over. Yeah. Oh look. <laughs> See where it's taking the ragworm. Oh look, it picked the ragworm up on the way down. Nice bonus fish. Not what we're after, but nice to see. Yeah, as if picked it up on the way down. Just letting the rig out like that and holding it all of a sudden, it just went. Oh, what the crack is it? What's that? I've just got myself to a little piece of reef and I've got some live lawn on just on like uh, a live bit it's just a locked in lead and about six foot of 20 pound floor row <laughs> and I've just jumped out on this thing because all around me uh, like a pod of I don't know if there were dolphins or porpoises surfaced right behind my back <laughs> I was busy fishing and went over so I just said I've jumped out on this thing so they're here somewhere Show you this rig. I've just missed a hit on this, so I might have lost it. And look, all we've got is we just got a live sand ale on a 6 0 chino, and a two ounce ball lead locked into a section of about 10 inches. All you do, drop to the bottom. When you hit the bottom and really quickly, you hit four or five winds. So that your your hook and your bait and your weight are just up off the bottom. Now a key to fishing like this, you're gonna be you're gonna be fishing for bass and pollock. And they are hard hitting. So you need to make sure that your drag is set right. Too tight and uh, chances are when they strike, it'll pop the hook or it'll snap you off. And too light, and you can't get bent into them, and they're away. 
what you'll often feel on the bike, we haven't really got enough drift at the minute, it's picking up slowly. We're about half a knot to three quarters of a knot. You need, you need really a knot of time. What you're looking for is you'll get like a tremble on the rod tip. And what that is, it's, it's the bait panicking because it knows there's a predator around. Or it'll just hoop straight over as something attacks it. That's why you need to have your drag set right. That is a cracking pollock. Look at that. That is, <laughs> that is a double figure pollock if you ever saw one, isn't it? Look at it. What an absolute stunner. Oop. That me Sandale away. Keep an eye on that rod for me for a second, I need to one up this fish. That's a fish. Oh, easy tiger. There you go, slightly smaller, and with hook just in a... See, look at the hook, just on the top of its mouth. Pop that out, like that. So just pop it out, there you go. Pop it out. Cracker, eh? Tell you what, I'm like a surgeon. Look at that. Bruising great pollock. I think I'm gonna have to keep this one for me tea. Well, that was a pretty successful little drift there. We might go around and do that again. There we are, I'll run through that rig really quickly. Dead simple look. Five, six foot, 20 pound floor row. Cocks and roll, six or chino. And all I'm using is some of the sandals that I've feathered up. You just pierce it in underneath the chin and bring the hook out on the top of its head like that. And all I did was you just drop right to the bottom. Now once you've hit the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six. Once you've hit the bottom, you need to get it off the bottom straight away. Drag set. And all you all you're waiting for is you're waiting for like a like a, a vibration almost, which is the sandale panicking, or like a couple of little hits like that. And that's the fish finding it. Just give it a second, and then all you do is you just lift into the fish. There you go. 
Try and keep these lines separate, otherwise they'll end up round each other. Anyway, as soon as you've hit the bottom, get it up a few winds, get it up out of the way. There's some fish showing on the sounder now, so we might get a hit in a second. Currently in 52 feet of water. Now there is next to no drift. So you can get away, even though I'm, I'm fishing, fishing like a peak. The fish are going to be, generally, on the back side of the peak. Hiding out of the way of the tide. But because there's next to no tide, I can fish all the way around it and catch fish. You will catch cod like this, but it's usually a pollock and a bass, bass method. All I'm doing there is periodically, periodically lowering down to the bottom, finding where the bottom is and giving it five or six winds because the course we're kind of going like this. I want to know where my baits are in relation to the bottom. Got my sand there. Somewhere down there attacking them. Something's attacking them hard. You can see like the boom boom. Big ballon rass will attack sandales. In fact I've I've caught my PB ballon rass on sandal. And it's a territorial thing. They're just trying to chase them out of their territory. Well it got it. I've got myself out to the wreck that I want to try and anchor in a minute and all I'm doing is I'm feathering up some bait now one of the best baits for conger is pouting and one of the easiest ways to catch pouting is with baited feathers now all these are these are just normal mackerel tinsels and I've just baited them with a little bit of squid and I've got a I think this is an 8 ounce lead and all I'm going to do is I'm just Just gonna run it right past the wreck. Now I've already, I've already had two drifts. And I've had a pouching each drift. So it's looking good. It's always good to see what type of uh, how healthy a wreck is by what's living in it. Because you won't get big fish like Ling and Conger on a wreck if there aren't things for them to eat, like whiting and pouting. I hadn't quite stopped when I dropped it over this. I hadn't quite stopped when I dropped it over the side. Oh. Thought that was on the baits a bit quick. There you have a little waiting. They're always really quick on the baits, that's why I th thought that was a bit quick for a pouting. It'll do for a conger bit. All I've done is I've just sliced up a calamari and I'm just using little sections. So we'll go around and have, we'll have two or three drifts until we've got maybe half a dozen fish to use as baits. And we'll put the anchor down. Decent bite on there again. You can see it. Oh, it's off. Got caught in me hood. Got my top caught in me. Got the rod caught in me hoodie. <laughs> I couldn't get it round. Well, that was a heavy fish. That that was a big eel. Any luck, we'll drop down and we'll get him back again. Just to quickly show you how I'm baiting up while I'm waiting for that fish to come back. This is my trace. Just a length of mono. On that one, I've got 300 pound triple fish. This is one I made up a while ago. This is. I think this is 400 pound. You don't need to go this heavy, but I just this was the first trace that came out of my wallet. I always keep all my traces. I always keep like a couple of dozen traces in wallets there. Just because when the fish come on the feed, you don't want to be spending loads of time tying your rigs. You want to be able to put them straight on. Anyway, it's a 10 ohm meat hook. 
And I've just put a luminous bubble on the edge. And you might recognise the waiting from earlier. All I've done is I've just flapped it off and just cut the sides into strips. And then all I'm going to do is just go through the skull. Now the skull is hard. There, yeah, like that. That's my bait. Because you've gone through the hard part of the skull, it should hold on well. And big baits usually mean big fish. The only thing is, is you have to properly let it take it. I mean, that bait I have in there is just that master pulled mackerel and a couple of pieces of squid. This is a big bait, so you have to properly let the bite develop. I've kind of just been playing it by ear today. Usually, I'm usually pretty, pretty well organised. When I got up this morning, I was a little bit, still a little bit sleepy when I was eating my breakfast. Took my wedding ring off to put some cream on behind my finger. Sat it right down next to my mobile phone. And I uh, forgot both my mobile phone and my ruddy ring. So I'm thinking it might be a little bit of a bad omen. Not only because I don't know what time it is, so I don't know what time the tide is, so and also I don't know what time I'm going in. But uh, also, I've just had a patch of fog blow through and the wind's picked up. We're rolling around. I don't know. Do you believe in bad luck? I know that I'll probably get it in the neck when I get home. It feels like we're about halfway through the flood. It's picked up. It was um, it was hardly flowing when we first anchored up. It's picked up and it's properly flowing through now. And uh, I've got to re-anchor. Sat us, we're sat just in front of the wreck. It should be just, just somewhere between like us and where that seagull, those seagulls are. So the sense of our bait should be wafting off into the wreck. We'll uh, we'll give it about ten minutes, and then I'll, I'll refresh these baits. I've got still got a waiting flapper on them there mash up a bit, I've got a bit of mackerel, a bit of squid, a bit of bluey, just like a bit of a cocktail bait on the other side just to see what's see what's going. Uh, give these baits 10 more minutes each and then we'll freshen them up. We'll fish them baits out for maybe three quarters of an hour and then we'll head off. My live bait at the back, which is sat, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 20 feet off the wreck. Hasn't seen anything either. That's that's a big sand dune. So it appears like they've gone to sleep. Well, we've had a couple of fish so far, so hopefully we'll get to show you a couple more before the end. Um, hopefully this wind doesn't pick up anymore. It's not supposed to, but that doesn't mean that the forecast to be believed. When the boat's rocking around like it is with the waves. Congers don't really like it if the bait's moving up and down or the, or the lead's banging on the bottom. So I found sometimes that if you hold it in your hand like that, you kind of compensate for the waves with the rod tip. So that the lead stays on the bottom the whole time. You can help pick the bites up. See, so I'm just letting it balance. Because if it's constantly going lead's banging on the bottom, you're not going to have it. Might have a customer. I refreshed this bait, this is a pouting head. big bait, it's like the size of my fist. What I'm doing is I'm just holding it, just holding the weight and then it just kind of settle like that. So if, I, if there's any bites, I'll see them.
see how when I was setting the hook, I made sure that I very, very gently took up all the slack line so that when I when I lifted into the fish, I connected with the fish straight away rather than just like lifting the lead or pulling the slack out the line. A little eel making the most of the tide. There, look, you can see the bait. It's just a pouting flapper. It's been a, been a small stamp of fish today, haven't they? Just, um, just about double figures. Got some hellish muscles on back of the red, haven't they? Either side of here. Those are its bite muscles, these ones. Biting down on a hook. <laughs> Can't get happy. There you go. There's the hook. That was uh, a 10 old Cox and Royal meat hook. Cracky nooks. And there's the bait, look. I think, we'll, I think we'll put a fresh one on. You can see there on this line, even though the Muppet was there, still kind of frayed it up a bit, didn't it? That's why you need to use really heavy mono for congas. Congas and the ling. Yeah, look, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the pouting that we caught earlier just put your knife in either side of its backbone and take out like that much and then feather it all up. Now look, just taking the fillets off the sides. They're like whinging kids aren't they? Now look, take the fillets off the sides and just give them like a little slice just to finger them up a bit, just so that it creates like an extra surface area and so it moves about in the boat. And same as before, you take your meat hook and you just go in. Like that. Now we're using such a massive bait like that. Oh. Shut up! They do that so that you give them some food and then it's just a, <laughs> just a vicious cycle, they just keep doing it. Like I was saying, because the bait's that big, you really have to let it let it take the whole bait. You're using the bait, the bait that big so you're, you're going to try and get away from the little tiny ones and you can catch one of the big ones. Even them, they need to get it all in their mouth to find the hook. Getting a bite again. But like I said, it's a massive bait. So you're kind of torn. And you strike straight away, and there's every chance that it's just found the bait and it hasn't found the hook. Or you can wait, and if you wait too long, you'll either deep hook the fish, or it'll find itself a snag. You're, you're always in a bit of a dilemma. I mean, I, I usually like to wait until I feel like a solid bite. I mean, I feel like it's got it in its mouth. So if you strike, you stand a good chance. fish has found part of the wreck. You can feel the line grating on it. I 
unfortunately like I said there's not much you can do in that situation you I mean I could have struck straight away and it could have been straight in the snag it's part and parcel of fishing for eels in wrecks they will find the snags now I can feel that this fish is still there I can feel it bumping I can also feel it grating so eventually what will happen is either the fish will give up and I'll get it moving or it'll snap it'll, it'll rub it it'll rub through the trace on the on the wreck now I prefer to just hold pressure on like this but don't go mad because you'll snap the rod I prefer to just hold pressure on like this because you can feel the fish feel what it's doing I mean now look, you see just just them little nods that's, that's the fish re-manoeuvring now if you keep pressure on like this and it tries to re-manoeuvre and loses, loses its hold you can get it out there are other ways of doing it you can always just you can leave you can let pressure off let it go slack and hope that the fish comes out of its hole and all you do is you just hold it in your hand with like negative pressure just holding it as soon as you feel it bump get straight on it but this this fish is well in the hole here I feel like if I, if I slacken off at all all it's going to do is it's going to go further and further into the wreck I can feel the eel kind of shaking its head and, and rasping away so I don't hold out much hope to get this one when they're a smaller eel and you hold pressure like this you can usually bully them out pretty quickly generally the bigger eels the smarter eels like this one you can just feel it through the line you can just feel like a sawing effect through the line we'll come back to this hopefully I'll be able to show you it I'm not holding out much hope on this one I'll try slacking off a little bit now, as soon as I slackened off the tiniest little bit he took it further into the hole we'll have to wait him out Now that other rod still still connects that eel in the wreck. This one that's connected to the wreck, I know it's a big fish, so I'm kind of committed to playing it out. Now, I have had it moving a little bit once, got maybe five feet on it as it moved, it's bound itself up again, so I know it's a good fish. We'll just uh, have a look at this eel. See bar him off, reel the rods in and then we'll move around a little bit on the anchor rope. See if we can't find a better angle to pull this fish out of the wreck. Look at that. Just spat the bait out. Didn't even need to unhook it. It's just spat the bait. a bite on the sand eel. I think the sand eel's probably gone now though. You see there was a bait, it swallowed it all. We had it right down deep. 
If I'd have let any slack go at any point in time when I was bringing that fish up, I'd have lost that. What I'm waiting for here is when you leave slack and the rod tip just sits. When the rod tip does a pull like that, you know the eel's moving. It's definitely still there. There's a better look at this one. Not a bad sized fish. Maybe 20 pound. Not much more, but he's in the 20s. Good spot, aren't they? See that straight down. No messing around. You can feel like little bumps every now and again. So I know, I know the fish is still there. And if it had been fully inside the wreck, it'd have had my braid against the wreck. So he'd have parted me off long ago. All he is, he's got hold of a piece of it, or he's wrapped his tail around a rock or something like that yeah so there we go big baits catch big fish then it had a move and I missed it well unfortunately that eel there uh, it's um, just the amount of time that it was trying to get it out and it was rasping around it ended up rubbing through the trace so all I got back was I got me, me leader and me swivel and about that much of me, of me hook length but same um, everybody loves a one that got away story don't they it wasn't too bad a day we had uh, the dog fish in the sand uh, some nice pollock on the reef and then we come and anchor up this was a new wreck i haven't anchored this one before um took me took me a try to uh, to get it right but when i got when i got right we found some fish uh, a couple of nice eels and uh, hopefully some hints and tips in there to show you that you can have a bit of a mixed day you just just time it right i mean i don't even know what time it is now but i know it's home time uh, i hope you um, if you like the videos, uh, give us a comment, uh, share them with your mates, and don't forget to hit that notification button, that way you'll know the next time a video comes out. Uh, have a nice day, and I'll see you all soon.